The Great Wave of Kanagawa prints by Okusai are some of the most famous pieces of art from Japan, so logically, LEGO made an art set out of it. Inspired by the builds of the Tranquil Garden and the Magic Castle sets, I decided to build this one and I'm kinda glad that I did, because after the lackluster experiences I had with the world map or the hyper niched down Rolling Stones logo, the Great Wave strikes a perfect balance between the rounded tile nature of basic LEGO art sets with the building tech techniques and clever piece usage from regular LEGO retail products. The end result is what I believe to be the best set the LEGO art theme has ever produced. And I'm not gonna lie, the amazing Spider-Man I haven't had a chance to review yet is probably a close second. If you've built any LEGO art set up until this point, you've been faced with this one by one rounded tiles classic scenario. And while fun for a while, gets boring really fast. So for this set in particular, with less than half of the main surface being committed to the technique was very nice for the build flow and made for a great looking sky in the background, with a large portion of the tiles having the not so common shade of light nougat. You'll probably notice that between the tiles the color is also light nougat, as the 16 by 16 black plates often used in LEGO art sets were also recolored in that shade, with the set having 4 of them in nougat and just 2 in black, that can be seen through the lower portion of the background. In the top left corner, two printed tiles with the name of the series to which the Great Wave belongs, and to the left, Okusai's signature. The Great Wave itself has some degree of depth, kept to a minimum when compared to the extreme that the LEGO Ideas Starry Night set have, which was to me at the time one of the downsides of that particular set. You kind of feel the wave about to crash, and some of the texture was done with the use of leaf and bird elements recolored in white. There's some hints of baby blue and dark blue colored elements for extra detailing and depth. I had never actually noticed the wave was crashing on top of boats, which these tan and dark tan shapes are meant to represent, nor had I noticed the boats had people rowing in them, as seen by these small one by one round printed tiles with bald man heads. It's also kinda great being able to compare the LEGO artwork to the replica of the artwork in the instruction booklet cover. During my research for the review, I found out that the size of the LEGO model is actually real close to the one from the original art piece, just off by about a centimeter, so from afar, you can even fool people into thinking you own the real thing. Which given the white border with extensive use of uncommon 6x6 white tiles and the tan colored brick built frame, make this set one that I'm actually considering displaying at home, a place where I display no LEGO at all as I keep it all in my studio. That's how good of a display piece I think this set is, and most of the world probably agrees as this set was sold out everywhere when it came out earlier this year, at over 1800 pieces as a price point of $99, which feels great value for what you're getting, even considering the 6 to 700 small round tiles and technic pins it has. While small, those pieces aren't exactly free to produce, and there's a significant amount of rather large elements to balance out the cost of production, like the big 6x6 white tiles, the 6 16x16 plates, 32 6x8 Technic frames and lots of actual bricks used on the frame. I'm kinda late to the party, but the Great Wave of Kanagawa is without a doubt the best art set done to date by LEGO. I'll try and get the Amazing Spider-Man to review soon and see if it deserves the second place spot, but before doing that, there's lots of reviews to cover, with the next one being the LEGO Star Wars buildable Chewbacca, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.